and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books i've just realized i mean i've had this on all day i've been at work today a bit christmasy isn't it i feel like red and white together is very mrs claus with father christmas trousers um welcome to the last video of february 2023 it's my reading wrap up for the month of february i read 11 books in the month of february i'm actually filming this on monday like i said just got home from work um and there's still Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three more days apart from today, left of February. So I wonder if I will finish any more books before the end of the week. Before the end of February? Maybe. I mean, you can always have a look over on my Instagram. My Instagram is Lauren and the Books, uh, a bit like this channel here. Um, and I read and review all of my books on the Instagram stories over there. So you can always have a little look over there to see if anything's happened in the meantime. But yeah, 11 books, all but one of them were library books. <laughs> So I've only got one book to show you, all the rest of the library books. I did know I had a lot of library book reading to do. I mean, I've still got, I would say, 40 library books there <laughs> to get through. But yeah, I've read quite a lot of library books. Um, I said that my January wasn't very good in terms of reading. I read nine books. Um, this month, a little bit better, a little bit more promise. Um, and a 4.5 stars and a four star book. So... That would definitely include promise, but let's get cracking straight away. Uh, the first book I read was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Um, read this very early on in the month. And yeah, it was a sort of whimsical, charming little story about Emily Wilde who travels to um, a country which I believe to be Iceland. The, the way that the words are spelt and stuff looks to me as though it's Iceland. Um, and is there studying the hidden people. So little elves and pixies and things like that and um i know iceland have a lot of um a lot of sort of uh mythology and stuff around that I'm still halfway through reading strangers in iceland which is a whole chapter about trolls in there which i must must get to um i must fit finish this year at some point love that book just didn't get just just didn't pick it up again after but will uh but yeah so this has been this is fine so she's also she's joined by her um her sort of colleague who isn't quite what he seems he might be a bit fairyish himself um and yeah it was fine i can see why people who like this sort of thing would really like this it was chock full of sort of like whimsy and loveliness and stuff like that but yeah this isn't ordinarily my sort of like go-to a lot of these books sort of appeared on people's best books of the year that's why i'm reading them but they're a lot of like fine books but yeah this was one was just fine for me so next up was the curfew by tm logan uh, another one from somebody's best books. I can't remember what. Uh, a thriller. And I love a thriller. It's particularly as like a palate cl cleanser. And I love sort of like getting really connected to a thriller. As I did with the book Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. Um, and just sort of like blasted through that in two days. Um, and I love... It, it just happens, doesn't it? You're just reading it and you're just like, well, I need to know how this ends. Um, but I didn't really feel like that with The Curfew. Um, as, as is the case with a lot of thrillers as well, I feel like the actions of the people in the book sometimes are a bit... So if I just tell you the premise, the premise is, is that this um, young lad, we're following the um, perspective of a, um, a dad of a young lad. This dad is a doctor. And his young lad's just finished his, um, his exams and he's due back. Um, but he breaks his curfew. He doesn't come back in time for his curfew. And then they're sort of like, I, I, I don't want to give you the full details because that's the plot and it unravels quite quickly. Um, but then um, as a result of him breaking his curfew, they're able to ascertain that maybe he wasn't where he said he was and where has he been and things like that. The, I speak as a person who has no children and does not wish to have any children. But when the police were getting involved and questioning these children and the parents were just like... He just doesn't want to talk about it. I was like, well, the police are getting involved. There's potentially a murder involved here. You need to get your son to talk about it. So I felt a bit exasperated about that. I particularly felt exasperated about the main character, the dad, who is a GP, um, and his sort of like laissez-faire attitude towards patient confidentiality. He does sort of touch upon it but yeah he's sort of like his behavior as a medical professional i think nah not cool so yeah so there was a lot of like frustrating behavior from um people within the book but it was fine it was fine it was but I, i'm heard, i've heard that tm logan is an absolute well i think on the front of the book it said something like king of the up all night thriller or something like that so maybe i'll give it another go but that one was for me was just fine 
Next one though, that's my 4.5 of the month, which was Welcome to St. Hell by Lewis Hancocks. Um, and this was a graphic novel about Lewis, um, who was born female and has transitioned um, and is now male. And yeah, it's all about um, Lewis's life in school and um, sort of outside of school. Like it's made majority sort of like childhood, particularly at school. Um, and yeah, it was just really funny <laughs> for starters um really heartfelt the depiction of his mum and dad was like proper lol like i felt like i knew that they were really coming off the page like his mum is in a dressing gown the whole time and she often sort of like the character often breaks the fourth walls and like i can't believe i'm still in this bloody dressing gown um and yeah and lewis sort of like talking about what it was like being lois as um as a child and um how um he began to realize that he wasn't born in the, the same uh, the, the the correct body for him and yeah, I just loved it. I particularly love the bit about his grandparents, like talking to his grandparents about um, them knowing him as Lois when he was a child and now them knowing him as Lewis and their relationship with that and how they chat to him about that and how they just can't see him as anyone else other than the person he is at the moment. And it's just, yeah it was just really really good fun so i really really had a lovely time with it and also like really important message and just this sort of representation it bloody matters in these books because yeah it was just fabulous really really loved it so great uh next up was monsters by claire dederer which was a non-fiction book cannot believe this didn't get long listed for the women's prize for fiction i thought it was an absolute shoe in um it is a book about um sort of uh, at the heart of it it's a book about so, she clapped <laughs> uh separating the art from the artist so uh, some of the examples that, that they have in there and what I really liked about this is that the chapters are sort of done by example so and some of the people that they were referring to within the book um, were people that whose previously I had loved their art but their views um, didn't align with my views um, one of those people is JK Rowling so there's a there's a little bit into there and then there's also things to do with um, uh, Michael Jackson and also people I had less um, like I knew that Woody Allen had done bad stuff but I didn't know what it was and finding out about the bad stuff that Woody Allen's done yeah he's done some pretty bad stuff and then it's about um, Helen uh, sorry Claire's um, relationship with the art that Woody Allen for example has created and how much she loved that art and can she weigh that up against the awful things that she he's done and it's really measured and really well researched and um, they're also sort of like I mentioned JK Rowling but there's also like a flip on it um in terms of like the thing because the majority of the people spoken about in this book are men but also I thought it was really interesting that some of the worst so like some of these men have done things like rape um sexual assault um all, like, all sorts of stuff and had awful views racist views and just ho horrific views and then on the flip side the women that are included in this book not including uh, jk rowling some of the worst stuff they've done is leave their children <laughs> like and that just feels so mad that that can tip the scales of how awful a how awful a woman can be compared to a man who's having sex with a minor like that sort of thing so yeah i was um i found it very measured and interesting and yeah just can't believe it wasn't long listed for the women's prize for non-fiction just blows my mind uh next up was another great book that i enjoyed um this month and that was madame by phoebe Wynn. um i think if you are a fan of um books by louise o'neill or the handmaid's tale or the secret history by donna tart um then you would love this sort of like novel with deep foreboding <laughs> building and catastrophe building and what's gonna happen and rah um set in a very exclusive school very exclusive girls school and we're following a character uh, Rose who work who goes to the school to teach classics and um yeah and her journey working in this school and finding out more about what this school is actually about um as opposed to what it looks like on the surface and yeah I love the sort of like gothic -y vibes and campus vibes and and stuff like that but also yeah the message was very and, and like when I sort of like I'd get a little inkling of what was going on and I think oh god is that what's going on here and then like maybe something else would lead to confirmation that that maybe was going on and then something else so like it really built very well like the 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 tension and the foreboding built fantastically so yeah would would highly recommend i feel like it's very sort of like if you're somebody who likes to read um a sort of gothic -y book in a on a windy day i mean it is such a windy day today <laughs> this would be perfect for that so yes madame by phoebe Wynn. uh next up god i can't honestly all of these were library books all of them an immense world by ed yong um this was a non-fiction book about um seeing um animals uh seeing animals 
um, an animal seeing each other via the animal senses. So they would have like d individual chapters about um, smell and individual chapters about touch and hearing and then stuff that animals can do that we can't do. And it was just sort of chocked full of facts. Some really sad facts as well. The one that's really stayed with me is that even birds kept into captivity around a certain point of year, they will spend the majority of their time in their um, cage or their enclosure in the southwest corner, even if they like they don't know where southwest is. <laughs> but and, and it's as if they're sort of like migrating, like even when they're in the in their cages. Sad. But yeah, loads and loads of stuff to sort of like learn in here. And like I've shown you, some of the stuff has really stuck with me. Um, yeah, uh, I, I feel like it was leaning on in terms of academic i would say like it, for me it felt academic but it was done in a sort of like jaunty this is sort of we're, we're having a chat about this but it is still there's quite a lot of science involved um so yeah maybe i could have done with it being a little bit more chatty i wonder if how i would have got on with it as an audiobook Debbie, you're really looking at me because i'm talking about a book about animals and you're listening to me like animals listen um there was some really interesting photos in there as well uh, something i was obsessed with as a child <laughs> was uh, what it was like to see in the same way that a dog would see and i always believed that dogs saw in black and white but that's not correct they see in sort of like um different sort of like muted color tones and they had a picture of a dog surrounded by all of his lovely toys um and then they had the picture as the dog would look at the toys and see what 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 colors he would be able to see so when you're buying sort of dogs wonderful bright colors things like they mainly just see everything as the same color so those colors they're for you <laughs> So, yeah, but I enjoyed it and, um, yeah, I think many others would. Uh, next up was Family Meal by Brian, what, Brian Washington. I found, this was one that I read really, really quickly. Um, some of it was just literally like two, two words on a line. I had two words on a line. Two, well, some of it was two words on a line, but some of it was like two lines on a page. I found it sort of hard to connect to this book in that, and I don't always have to connect to a book or feel like I can see myself in that book in order to enjoy it. Like, I definitely don't have to do that. But there was so much uh, sexual promiscuity and drug taking in this book. Like, you couldn't often read a line without someone rimming someone <laughs> or um, taking a shitload of drugs. Um, so that I was like, oh, everything felt a bit of a hand's distance because I'm... I'm not a drug taker and I never have been and I'm not um my sort of relationships that I've had have never really been sexually promiscuous I don't think I was given a chance if I'm being honest <laughs> so um yeah so I always felt a bit like that um it's about um you're hearing about three guys you hear from three different points of view um three gay men and their relationships with one another and their relationships to um the other people around them and yeah it was it was fine for me. It was fine. But yeah, I think it was the connection thing that I, I struggled with. Next up was a reread and it was a really bloody good one. It was Babel by R.F. Quang. Um, I read this last year. It was my second favourite book of the year. Um, and I've read it this year uh, on audio. So I read it last year, but I listened to the audio book of it this year. Uh, this year. And yeah, uh, one of my favourite books of the year already. <laughs> like, um, And yeah, so this is by R.F. Quang, who also wrote Yellow Face, which was also one of my favourite books of the year last year. Um, and it's a book about a young lad called Robin Swift who's rescued um, from China by uh, a scholar at Oxford. He's brought over and sort of um, made into a bit of a, a gentleman and taken to, to school and, and trained, um, trained in this wonderful sort of art of this magic system that they have at a, a particular college in Oxford called Babel. Um, and that is where um, words, the power of words and definitions of words are imbued into these silver, bar silver bars. Um, and then those silver bars can do things and they can do, and a lot of the stuff is to benefit the rich people. So a lot of stuff is like imbuing the words for steady into a still silver bar um, and then popping those into carriages so that the rich people can all ride around in very smooth running cabbage, uh, ca cabbages, carriages. But there's also weaponry and stuff like that gets involved. And it, like I said, it's normally the, the, the richer people. So that's at the heart of the novel, but it's also a novel about friendship and it's also a campus novel because it's set on uh on a, a um at a university and like parts of it really made me think like i would feel like i was reading his dark materials again like there's just parts of it when they're discussing oxford and like sort of navigating around oxford and stuff that really made me feel like that and yeah i just love this and even though there's some like shocking moments in it they still shock me just as much if, if anything like maybe a little bit more i was crying listening to some of this because there's some really really sad parts and the ending is just 
heartbreaking really heartbreakingly inevitable i guess um and yeah it's fabulous like really 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 good book and when i read it last year and when i was talking about it and how much i loved it i was saying like i wish this is a book that i could read again for the first time like i loved it that much i'd, I'd love to have that experience and that that is something that i sort of rarely feel and listening to it again did give me elements of that so i really did sort of grant my own bookish wish in terms of because i was coming at it listening to it from from somebody else's point of view and listening to the pronunciations in a way that i never would have been able to pronounce them and the narrator was amazing it's an amazing piece of work whether you listen to it read it please please go and do it because absolutely fantastic book fabulous bought it for my dad for christmas he's read 20 pages <laughs> so it's not for everyone <laughs> uh, my sister really wants to borrow it because she loved uh, yellowface so much but god loved it loved it next up was another um audiobook i think that's my first audiobook so fable was my first audiobook of the month i think because it was so long and it just i really wanted to get into it but then i read another one i listened to another one which was the twat files by dawn french oh gear shift um dawn french is a comedian and actor from the uk um and love her like really really love her uh she was all sort of like very prolific all through my childhood vicar of dibley she stars in that and um also does a lot of sketches with her sort of comedy partner jennifer saunders um and yeah loved love hearing her interviewed love her i've enjoyed uh, some of her books before in the past um and yeah this was this was fine like compared to how much i loved it and some of it i found a bit cringe which is a bit of a shame really um but also, it's sort of like drawing on moments where she's been daft in her life and she refers to herself as being a massive twat and stuff like that. And the repetition of that gets a bit like, yeah, we get it now, Dawn. But also, I'd heard a lot of these stories before. Um, she did the press tour for this book not so long ago um, and was on a lot of the podcasts that I listen to, on a lot of the TV shows that I watch and stuff like that. And, I mean, she gave away a lot of the stuff that was in the book. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that I was hearing for, like, the not even the, the second or third time. I would say, like, the fourth or fifth time. Um, still, like, she can tell a story and, like, it's great. And to hear it sort of narrated from her was great. But, yeah, there were some sort of cringy bits in it that I was like, oh. Um, next up was My Husband by Maud Ventura. This is a uh, translated book, translated from the French. Um, I read this very recently from one of my Friday reading vlogs and it, it was three books that I didn't, they were all due back at the library and I said to David, which of these should I read? And he picked that one. I'm sort of glad he did because it was a great book to read in February. February I always like to try and read maybe some books about love, about dating, all of that sort of thing because Valentine's Day. But this was a great sort of like flip on that. So we're following a woman, a nameless woman, is she nameless i think she is nameless um and hearing about how much she loves her husband and my god she loves her husband when i say she loves her husband i think what i mean is that she's obsessed with him like obsessed with him and his life before her and how he could and how much she loves him and everything she does for him and all of the sort of like things she's all of the special ways she cares for him and stuff like that and then as the book goes on, you find out that there's also all these special ways that she sort of punishes him for things that he does wrong, even though he doesn't really know that he's doing these things wrong and the things that she'll do in order to keep her, her um, relationship um, perfect as she sees it. Um, and then the last chapter just really spins the whole book on its head and is really sort of like a great move at the end. So I think the whole, the last chapter made it for me. I mean, I enjoyed it, but yeah, the last chapter I was like, well done, Maud Ventura. Well done. This is a really good piece of literature. So, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and great. Another really one that I read really, really fast. I, I read 11 books this month and we're still four days away from the end of the month. So I've done very, very well this month. Uh, next up, not so good, was A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin. Like, this was fine, but I've seen this sort of thing done millions of times even like i mean this is sort of like jane austen <laughs> but i've seen this done millions of times in terms of like bridgerton and um like other sort of like books that are told that, that there's been a sort of revival haven't there of sort of like courtly stuff that's coming back and and dating in that sort of time and stuff like that and fortune hunting which is what this book alludes to and yeah it was fine and i thought the the characters were all fine but that's because i've heard them all before and the plot was fine but that's because i've read it all before and yeah it was all just Fine. but i think if you are again in the same way that if you're into um like fairies and stuff like that then you'd be really into emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies um i think if you were into reading stuff like this then i think you'd be really into this as well so um yeah i see 
I see what it's there for, but it wasn't there for me. Um, and then the last one is the, the, the final book, which is a book that I actually own, is Sunny by Suk Ojla. Uh, we read this for Patreon Book Club and discussed it yesterday. Yeah, this just wasn't for me. So we picked this because it was to, uh, the theme was dating. Uh, and there is certainly a lot of dating in here. And I've got to say, the representation of dating um, in here, I think, uh, in the modern world, she says, having not gone on a date, like, only one in her whole life, the rest of the time just going out of boys from school. Uh, and then going out with David instantly. Um, I feel like the representation of dating seemingly was, was quite well done, particularly after we, we discussed it at Book Club. A lot of people said, yep, yeah, that sounded a bit too... It's a bit too true, to be honest, a bit too close to home. Um, and... I um, I thought that was a good representation. Uh, it's also, she's a South Asian woman, so it was interesting to hear about her home life. And um, there's some stuff in there, important stuff, about microaggressions and about um, cultural appropriation and stuff like that. But the thing that I just couldn't get away from was the pure, sheer amount of fat, po fat phobia in here. Fat phobia, I said fat phobia. And diet talk. It's relentless. It's just... And, and the way she talks to herself. And I, I tried to justify it because the thoughts she'd had i'd had a lot of those myself when i wasn't very kind to myself when i was in my 20s um and um and in my teenage years as well um and i had thought the things that she was thinking so i thought okay well let's see if there's gonna be a turnaround but it wasn't it was the people around her that were saying it as well including her mother and some friends and stuff like that um so yeah that really brought it down. And, and like I'm aware that still happens and I can't just write off that no one's ever going to have a bad thought about their body ever again just because I don't. Um, but I've, I've done so much work on myself that I just didn't need this. I didn't need this sort of like reminding me of calories and things and something feels a bit tight on you and how how uncomfortable that should make you feel and stuff like that. So yeah, I couldn't I couldn't connect with it in that way. But also like I always say, don't I? I'm not a, I'm not a big women's contemporary fiction reader. And it's when it's down to things like this, uh, like the diet talk and stuff like that. There was also quite a lot of stuff in there. So she was quite like, although we're hearing it from her perspective, I found Sunny herself like quite rude and often quite judgmental of the men that she was dating and then sort of lamenting how judgmental they were of her as well. So uh, yeah, there was a lot in here that I didn't like. There's some stuff that I thought, yeah, that's good. But yeah, not for me. But I'm going to give this to my mum to take on holiday with her because I do think it was sort of like a, a holiday read from maybe a perspective you hadn't heard heard from before in that case go for it but there we go so those were the 11 books that i read in the month of february do let me know if you've read any of these books let me know um if uh what, how your reading was in february just had a thought about posing for the thumbnail of this normally i've got a lovely big stack of books it's just going to be me and this one book isn't it <laughs> i mean you've seen the thumbnail let's i wonder how it turns out but yeah let me know how your reading went in february and i will see you all again soon i'll see you on sunday actually for my tbr for the irish readathon uh yeah i'll see you then bye